Hi guys, how are you? Welcome back. Uh, apologies today, I couldn't make the video. I had uh, some things to do today, very, very busy. Um, I'm looking at a, a, a job instructing and some other things that I might be doing in the future here. Um, but it's very difficult to uh, to get people to understand a lot of the macro stuff, and I understand that. And I'm definitely not the most articulate individual in the world. But I think it goes beyond that. I think it goes beyond my articulation. It has to do more with what is Price doing? Price is right, and I can come up with 1,000 stories to tell you why. And some of it might be true, some of it might not be true, some of it may or may not be true in the future. Uh, but I think when we have discussions, when we have questions, they're important. Because if you don't have dialogue and you can't, you can't find questions, then you can't find answers. All right. So we had a nice little discussion today. Um, and we'll talk about that maybe in this video a little bit later, but before that, I want to uh, go over this video here. Uh, I think it's important uh, as to some of the things that he says that are wrong and why they are wrong so you can have uh, at least a different perspective from what he's saying. Okay? All right, so let's get started. And I'll stop and comment and go from there. Show. We talk macro. <coughs> I'm trying to make sense of markets. Ooh, man. Hey, you probably tuned in just to see if I was going to wear the crown today. But yes, the walls of the kingdom have held in what is now the third day of the special edition of Macro Show, Kingdom Under Siege. And yes, sellers are back in a big way. Uh, Brent Johnson of Santiago Capital was generous enough to send us a chart. We'll take a look at the speculative positioning. As you saw by the title of the show, the dollar is crashing. What does it mean? What's going on? It, oh, no, don't tell me, Steve, you're still bullish. Do I just don't get it? I know many of you are going, yeah, you don't get it, and you're hitting the comments right now. Uh, he doesn't get it. He doesn't understand it. Um, he tries, but he doesn't understand it. That is true. How can I be dollar bullish when it's blatantly going down? I'm going to show you from a macro perspective how I can be macro bullish on the dollar, even though the tape's going down. I know it's crazy because the dollar. Okay. Macro bullish. What does that mean? That means that I'll be right eventually. That's macro bullish. So remember that, uh, you know, the way they say things or the way they don't say things is very important. If I'm macro bullish, that means I will be right someday in the future because it's a big economy and it takes a long time, blah, blah, blah. It's telling us something. It's screaming out loud that there are major problems going on and it's not fixing anything. You know, from a market perspective, you know, we've seen stocks just defy logic. You know, one of my clients called me this week and he's a big PE guy, price to earnings ratio. And he's, he called me up and said, Steve, do you know what the PE of the S&P is? I'm like, yeah, it's pretty high, isn't it? He goes, why are people buying? I said, ah, oh, there's two reasons. One, they actually think the economy is going to rebound higher and justify higher stock prices. Or it's a greater fool theory that hopefully someone who doesn't know the stocks are massively overvalued will gladly buy at this price from them. He laughed and said, yeah, sounds like the greater fool theory to me. And why does that have to do with the dollar? Well, it's simple. What have we seen in the market go, going on lately, right? We've seen people spec, uh, short volatility and that didn't work out. Now they're heavy short the bond market and they can't get interest rates to go up any higher. And so what's last? Short the dollar, drive the dollar down because everyone's already crammed into stocks. So how do you make the market go up? How do you get stocks to go up when everyone's in them? Okay. Let's just stop there for a minute. Short volatility, short bonds, 
and now we're gonna go short the dollar isolators uh, these you know these put calls ratios and all these things they're nice they're nice only when they're at extremes and sometimes when they are in extremes there's a reason why they are at extremes okay uh, that's important to understand so if you're trying to determine why the dollar volatility whatever uh, moves in a certain direction uh, you cannot base it on put call ratios and sentiment charts and all these things okay so that sounds good me saying it so how can I prove that to you I want you to go out seek these isolators put call ratios and um, sentiment charts and I want you to go out and trade it I want you to do the opposite of what they do and I want you to tell me after a while obviously on a, on a simulated account after uh, after a while tell me what your return is going to be it's simple it, I don't have to explain it to you you can go out and trade it yourself in a simulated account and then tell me what your return is going to be based on your uh, analysis of doing the opposite of what these isolators do you will get crushed so if it does not work in real time you trading it then anybody that tells you based on this sentiment chart based on this put call ratio based on whatever they're full of shit it doesn't work null and void zip nada throw it out the, out, out the window okay you take big positions on short volatility short bonds and short dollar and now we're in a position where the dollar has to fall the dollar's got to be bearish going forward and if it does rally it is going to be a wrecking ball we've got economic data or we've got lending growth data that's now well now it has to fall well he was dollar bull he's still saying he's dollar bull now in macro meaning at some point in the future he is still bullish and um so now the dollar has to fall in order for it uh, not to be a wrecking ball all right what makes the dollar go down is it one thing no there's not one thing there's several reasons for any of these indicators that's why you can't write books on these things the dollar is going down one look at the exports exports are nearly uh, close to a trillion dollars what happens when you export a dollar well you flood the world with dollars no uh, let me see if I can pull that up here okay so here it is okay since the pandemic began the current account is all the way down here near historic levels now remember that this 63 billion is uh, per month okay so we go out 12 months uh, 600 billion plus another 120 it's 720 let's say 740 billion okay so 740 billion dollars so you're exporting exporting to the rest of the world 700 700 and let's say 40 50 billion whatever you're exporting them so it's being printed being uh, pumped into the productive economy and then those dollars are exported to the rest of the world while we receive them imports right so then that goes to the rest of the world now is that dollar bullish does that when you are exporting more and more dollars is that going to make the dollar more scarce or less scarce to the rest of the world okay it's not rocket science obviously it's going to make it less scarce how about um, the, uh, foreign investment right what about foreign investment Do you see any foreign investment coming into the US uh, under these conditions and the answer is no there isn't how do I know that well I can look at the US uh, employment population ratio and it's 57.4 percent today all right so if there was foreign investment coming in into the productive economy is what I'm talking about I'm not talking about stocks and bonds okay then this would be 
much higher. It's not. And this is, you know, remember, we, we came out of lockdown in May. So we can't use this lockdown as an excuse anymore because this snapback that you're looking at has nothing to do with QE and, oh, we stimulated the economy and everything is going back to normal. No. No. You cannot go from a lockdown to an opening and not get some kind of reaction. Okay? It's just not, it's not even logical. Uh, and yet they have used this uh, as to say, look, we're going back to normal. Look, everything is going fine. No. No, I'm sorry. <laughs> That's that's just that's just bullshit. The other point I want to make from this chart is that when you see the uh, U.S. employment population ratio at 57, that is not that is not a strong economy. And whenever there is not a strong economy, what happens to that currency? It falls. That currency weakens. Okay. Uh, so that's another aspect that you have to consider. Then take a look at the federal debt, okay, public debt as a percentage of gross domestic product. And we have soared all the way up to as high as almost 138%. Came down now only because the GDP since the lockdown has uh, pumped up, and that's in Q3. But what's going to happen in Q4? Well, look at all the lockdowns. San Francisco just locked down today. Right? How many more of these lockdowns are we going to have because the hospitals are going to start to get overrun? Okay. So uh, how is that good for the dollar? I don't see that. Let's take a look at the 10-year bond. Why does it keep rising? Right? That's the question. Why does this thing keep rising? Well, they're extremely short. Who's short? You're either long or you're short. You can't you can't be long short. I, I don't understand what that means. Well, there's a lot of speculators out there. Well, yeah, but it's the same speculators that have been buying bonds. It's the same people. So how can you be long uh, bonds and short bonds uh, excessively that, that, at one percent? I don't understand what he's looking at. I, I assume he's looking at some again isolator, some kind of put call ratio, some sentiment, I don't, I don't know what the fuck he's looking at, but my point here is that when the vast majority of the people uh, are buying bonds, so the Fed can buy bonds at a higher rate, okay, and then they make a profit off of that, you can't be short, can't be, it cannot be done. So why is the, the, the interest rate rising? Because for whatever reason, the bond market does not believe that, you know, 0.54% is enough. And it may be something temporary. It may be just them taking profits. I don't know why. I don't pretend to know these things. But I do know that it is rising. And when the interest rate is rising, it is making money more expensive. Well, that's contradictory to what the... the the government is doing the government is sitting here wanting to print more money so if they want to print more money then don't they want for borrowers to borrow more do they want interest rates higher no they don't want interest rates higher but it is going higher so what do they have to do they have to QE more because 120 billion per month is insufficient to keep demand so you need now the fed to come in here and print more uh, i'm sorry well yeah print more qe more now i have talked about this on the live chats i've talked about it in other videos and so forth and this is why i keep bringing it up but again the, some of the problems are that some of the people they don't they, they kind of listen to it they're like okay i don't know what nick is talking about and they move on i i like i want to buy stocks i want I, yeah okay i want to buy stocks you know you, you get these kind of people but they don't understand and ignorance is bliss and it works great until it doesn't when you're uh, momo right momentum 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 when you're a momo guy you don't give a shit about these things all right so my question to you is how does somebody know that the bond market is going to blow up what do you think? Somebody's going to come out with a big fucking flashing sign and say, hey, the bond market is going to blow up. Hey, the bond market is going to go blow up. Get ready. Mm -hmm. Yeah, blow up. 
No, because the bond market has been going down for such a long time. Look at this. Now, nobody sits here and thinks about, oh, you know, the bond market is going to blow up. Nobody thinks about these things, right? So how do they know what it looks like? They don't. They just assume that, well, it's been falling for, you know, 40 years. Therefore, it will fall another 40 years. But you can't think like that. And I'm not saying that the bond market is going to blow up. But I need you to at least be aware that it can. It can. And it may look just the way it does right now. Are there tools that we can use? Absolutely. We can increase QE. But drawing assumptions without considering the possibilities, and it's a possibility, there's not probability right now, the possibility that something more can occur from this, I think is a mistake, okay? So when his buddy is sitting here or whatever, his investor or whoever he is, is that saying, hey, look at the PE, the PE is quite high, the PE is quite high, why? It doesn't make sense, nothing makes sense, I don't know, haha, <laughs> yeah, well, no, it's not that it doesn't make sense. Okay, it does make sense because you have pumped in $4 trillion in four months. And we know that when that happens is that money stuff is spent, it goes into the uh, productive economy, goes from the 95% household to savings, profit savings, it goes into the stock market, all right, asset uh, prices and asset prices go higher. We know that. That's a fact. Okay, that's a fact. We also know that if you're going to reduce the amount of bonds in existence, you're going to increase the cash, the dollars in, in existence. Okay, so what does that do? Well, that suppresses interest rates. Whatever the coupon is, it gets suppressed, it gets pushed down. Okay, because this, the bond price will go up because the supply of bonds will go down, which does what? Well, it suppresses interest rates. And now suddenly those interest rates are not being suppressed and the interest rates are starting to rise and it's doing what? Well, it's challenging the, the, uh, the stock market, the stock market earnings yield. Okay. Cause the earnings yield keeps falling as prices keep rising. And I keep saying this in videos, even the live ones that you're getting compression and compression is not good. So what's happening is the interest rate is rising up to 1% while the stock market keeps rising and the earnings yield keeps falling. This is the compression that I'm talking about. So then what does that leave us with? Well, there's another phenomenon in mechanics of, uh, of trading. And what is that? Well, let me show you again. And I'm sorry I have to do this, you know, uh, again. And I'm taking up a lot of time. But, you know, I wish it was as simple as... People make it out to be, uh, but it's not. It's not that simple. And again, you're going to see that this is the Turkish index, okay? And the Turkish index has been rising since 1998, and everybody's like, oh, look, they're, they're making so much money. Well, let's kind of look at the same thing in dollars. No, it's not Turk. It's two. There it is. It's been going down in dollar terms. Why? So why is this happening? Because the beset is being devalued. The, 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 the currency, the Turkish lira has been devaluing, okay, against the dollar. So that's why you see that the beset is rising because the lira is falling. So when, you, when, you, when you're looking at it from a mechanical standpoint, um, then you end up with this phenomenon where you get a devaluing currency and an appreciating stock market. Okay. 19 minutes and we barely covered anything, but I'm Pretty sorry. Pretty there. Ton of stuff on the dollar. Let's just jump right into it because what does a falling dollar tell us? It really should be good. You know, President Trump has been, you know, wanting, for four years, he's been wanting to. Okay. Falling dollar is good relative to what? You know, there, there's a good reason to have a strong dollar and there's a bad reason to have a strong dollar. To pick the one side over the other uh, I, is a mistake. There are times such as Europe. Europe had high inflation, high, un, I'm sorry, high unemployment, low inflation. They had a very strong currency with the euro at 160. 
it is in that case good for them to lower their prices provided that they remain net exporters <laughs> because they are net exporters it's not good for an importing country to lower their currency it's not good uh, you can't print borrow and import to infinity if you're going to be an importer you need a strong currency to keep importing if the currency starts to devalue and you're importing at record historic levels that's a bad thing so why is he saying it's good and Trump won forget about Trump Trump doesn't know his ass from his underwear falling dollar right and, w and what is that for to increase exports but is that helping I don't know and and if it did we should also see it help employment but here's export price index on a year-over-year -year basis versus the trade weight dollar and normal we cannot be net exporters. We're not designed to be net exporters. That's not the way the game is set up. If you're going to be a world reserve currency, you have to be a net exporter, right? It's a position of strength, as Edward used to say. Yes, it's a position of strength only when you're at full, em full employment, not when you're not at full employment. You see, it's a double-edged double sword. When you have high unemployment, fallen currency, and you're importing you're exactly like turkey that's the worst combo now if you're at f full employment and you you are at that point importing with a strong currency that's okay so to say well we're gonna we're gonna lower the the dollar and we're going to increase our exports no no that's not the way it works because the weaker the currency the more money that you're going to be exporting to the rest of the world that's supposedly going to increase your exports what happens then the demand for the dollar falls it doesn't increase it's there's no scarcity for the dollar because your currency is devaluing and you are exporting more and more dollars to the rest of the world to buy uh, imports so you can lose control of that and that is highly highly you know problematic and that's why I keep saying hey we're running in the fucking dark towards a cliff and we don't know where that cliff is and we're running at top speed doesn't mean it's gonna explode or hyperinflation or anything like that it's not what I'm saying we're just headed in the wrong direction that's what I've been saying and again you know he's saying it's good for the dollar to go down and it increases exports no because if you're increasing exports you're increasing um, at the same time uh, the dollar is being exported to the rest of the world because your currency has devalued so there's more dollars in the world when the dollar is falling as you see it in red the export price index is up, meaning there's demand for U.S. exports, but it's not doing anything. Ah. I mean, you can clearly see where... Uh, see, now, for the wrong reasons, he's starting to get it. That, hey, you know, the dollar's falling, but we're not seeing that and that uh, uh, the export rise. Yes, but he doesn't know why that's happening. He doesn't get it. I told you in the beginning of the pandemic, before everything started to crash, you cannot shut down the number one, two, three, four economies in the world. You cannot exceed global trade of more than 60%. It's difficult. You, how are you going to do that? And if you're not going to do that, how are you going to sustain that? And if you don't, well, what happens? What happens? Well, let me show you what happens. Here it is. Here it is. 62%, whatever, 60 plus percent. What happened in the great financial cri uh, crisis? Boom. Okay. World trade as a percentage of GDP collapsed. And then it happened again in 2015 and 16. Started in 14. Okay. And then it started to rebound. So where do you think it's going to be now? It's going to be down here again. It's going to be down here. So there's no demand for the dollar if there's not going to be a lot of global trade. Because trade, global trade has fallen because of COVID. So do you see the problem? Do you see what I'm talking about? It's not the way he thinks, but he got to the, to the conclusion for the wrong reasons. 
right? All right. The blue line is headed up and the dollar is headed down. But for some reason right now, the dollar is headed lower and export prices are decelerating and they're negative on a year over year basis. And he's confused. That doesn't make any sense. No, it makes a lot of sense, my friend. But you there's just a, don't know there's why. something that we have to address because so many people think that stimulus is money printing. It's not. It's just, it's, it's like Robin Hood. You take from the rich, you give to the poor, except borrow from the rich, give to those who need it. That's what it is. It's a, it's the federal government is a dollar redistribution machine. That's what you should see it at. It is not creating dollars when it borrows them because they're not borrowing from the bank. They're borrowing from people who already have them. And Q He's wrong. He's wrong. He's wrong. He doesn't understand. Okay. Deficits are bond expansion. Okay. It's in a bond expansion. QE converts what? Bonds to cash. He doesn't get that either. He thinks that, well, the dollars already exist, therefore we're just recirculating the, the dollars. Yes, the actual physical digits, yes, may be recirculating. But the bonds are expanding. They own the, the, the wealthy, quote-unquote, that are being redistributed. They're not being redistributed because the bondholders own more and more and more of the United States. So much more that it has exceeded GDP. And everybody's like, yeah, but look at look at our national wealth. Our national wealth is a hundred billion trillion. Uh, come on, it's not yes, but when you are you are exceeding GDP and you're 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 marching towards that hundred trillion of bond issuance, and you know we're going to be at uh, thirty trillion before you know it, and before you know it, it's going to be up to forty trillion with a stagnating economy that's not producing and it's not creating wealth. Well, guess what? Now you're in fucking trouble. You're heading in the wrong direction in the dark, running top speed towards a cliff. That's what I keep telling you. So here we are, September 30th, the end of the fiscal year for the daily treasury statement, right? This is the, the government's checkbook. And when you go down, you're going to see over here on the right side, withdrawals, the redemption of bonds, the redemption of bonds were $15 trillion dollars. Redemption of bonds, $15 trillion. Well, how much did they issue? So then you got to go to the other side of, uh, 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 of the balance sheet. Well, they issued $19 trillion. So they took $15 trillion to redeem, right? So they printed an additional, they renewed $15 trillion worth of bonds to pay off the previous uh, bonds that were coming to maturity. And then they issued an additional $4 trillion on top of that, right? So then you come down here. And it tells you that last year, in 2019, right, the, the, the public debt was $22.6 trillion. And when it ended this year in 2020, guess what? It was 26.92, right? That's uh, $4.234 trillion. Okay, you subtract the uh, Social Security, and then you end up with $1.1. But for me, it doesn't matter. For me, it's $4.234 trillion because that's how much money was pumped into the economy. Like it or not, that, that, would, that went into the economy. But you can see how I'm, I'm saying that there's a bond expansion. This is money printing right here. The bonds that are issued. He doesn't understand that. He just, think, he just thinks money is going from savers to the government and back. Uh, let me show it to you. He, he just thinks that, hey, you know, we're just going to take the, uh, the savings... The savings from here and then just kind of pump it back in and then just kind of do this it's the same money it's just a wealth just distribution blah 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 bullshit that's not the way it is that's absolutely not the way it is no way because you get a bond expansion they don't just fucking give their savings to the government for the fucking the goodness of their heart absolutely not they 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 give their money so they can get more bonds more bonds. He doesn't know what he's talking about. It's painful to watch him. And and it's it's comical in, in the sense that he kind of figured out that, wait, you know, uh, exports are not rising. <laughs> there's something wrong. Yes, there's something wrong. Very good. Bravo, my friend. He got there like a blind squirrel and you found a nut, but you don't know why.
nice guy, nice guy, don't get me wrong, but he doesn't know what he's talking about, and he was on fucking Real Vision, this guy, give me a fucking break. All right, let's continue, I'm sorry. We, as we previously established, is not money printing. Like even Ted <sighs> Chair Powell at his last, or uh, the November press conference, and I wish I had a clip of the Q&A session. When he was asked, is the Fed was printing money, he says, no, all we are doing is changing the nature of a bank's reserve. And that was Fed speak for, we're, we're shortening the duration. Okay, now he's talking about QE. He, he went from money printing to QE. He's wrong again. He's wrong again. Why is he wrong? Because converting bonds to cash, going into the open market and saying, hey, you got a billion dollars worth of bonds. Oh, you have $120 billion worth of bonds. Okay, what's the going rate? Going rate is $120 uh, each bond. Okay, here's $120 to everybody. Here it is. I'm buying it from you. That's not money printing? What is he giving? Is, is he giving another bond for a bond? No. He's giving a dollar for a bond. He's exchanging it. He's converting it. He's liquefying bonds to cash. The fact that they, they're called reserves doesn't mean shit. <laughs> All money is money. Bond is money. Reserves, money. Cash, money. Coins, money. They're all money. How you call them doesn't, doesn't mean dick. It's frustrating because he's like, no, we're not, we're not deficit spending. Correct. The Fed is not deficit spending. He's not, but he is printing. He's converting bonds to cash. That's the pure definition of printing. So when we're saying printing in the sense that, hey, we're deficit spending, we should say bond expansion, bond expansion, because that is what's happening. There's an expansion of the bonds. Ah, it's painful. Because he, he's misleading people, and he's got a large following. That's the fucked up part about it, right? He's got 7,700 views, uh, 968 likes, but he's misleading them. Knowingly or unknowingly, probably unknowingly, but it's painful. We're taking a 30-year bond, for example, that has a long duration and shrinking it to an overnight asset, as we've heard Dr. Lacey Hunt say. They're not doing anything. Overnight asset is just reserves, it's just cash. That, that's all it is. It's not money printing. There's no there's zero dollars printed. And yet QE is actually dollar bullish. And if you're dollar bullish, you're bond bullish. Because I mentioned in the show the other day, I was talking to Colorado QE, Travis, wait. right? It, QE is bond bullish? What? What? Do you know why? He, <laughs> I know why he's thinking. Oh, okay. Hold on. Here's what he's thinking. If you go back to uh, 2008 at the bottom, the dollar was 7.698. Okay, I'm gonna be I'm gonna be exact here. Okay, and what happened? Well, the dollar started to rise. Why did the dollar started to rise? Because the financial market was stabilized. The deficit started to come down. People started going back to work. The unemployment rate started to fall. The people uh, employment started to rise. So what happened to the economy? The economy started to strengthen. Okay. As the economy starts to strengthen, what do you think is going to happen to the dollar? It's going to start to strengthen. What else happened? What else happened? There's another reserve currency in the world, correct? What's the other one? It's the Euro US dollar. What happened to Europe? Well, <laughs> they were going through a turmoil. They went through the European crisis, the Brexits, the, uh, the Grexits, the Brexits, the Spanish exits, the Italian exits, everybody's fucking exiting. Remember that? What happened to the euro? Euro started to fall. What happened to the dollar? Continued to rise because the U.S. was doing much better than the rest of the world. And that's why I kept saying back then, 
Europe is a big fucking black hole. They're trying to be net exporters. Everybody cannot be an exporter because you have Europe an exporter, Asia an exporter, the Middle East an exporter. So who the fuck is going to import? We were the only game in town that was importing. So without the U.S. importing, what, what happens to the rest of the world? How are they going to export? They're going to export to who? <laughs> so that's when I was bullish, right? That's when I was bullish because it was true. And because we were able to lower unemployment and, and and strengthen the economy at the same time, yes, it's a position of strength in, under those conditions. Because as a world reserve currency, you have to be an importer. How much of an importer matters? It matters. So the strength of the dollar was not necessarily only due to the U.S. Uh, improving but it also had a lot to do with the euro devaluing with their crisis. High unemployment. Same thing with uh, the UK, the, the pound, right? So that led to that. So he thinks, this guy thinks, that while we were doing all this and we were doing QE, that it was QE that strengthened the dollar. Ah, oh, <laughs> that's painful. That's so wrong. <sighs> I, I want to hug him and be like, dude, you're, you're fucking clueless. And we had this discussion where it's like, once you realize that all a dollar is, is a zero duration treasury bond, you get why they tend to move together over time. It's the same thing. So if the Fed's doing QE to lower interest rates and raise bond prices, then isn't QE bullish for the dollar? No. Well, it is. Let's go take a look. Here's uh, the monetary base. Now, we know that quantitative easing can raise and lower the monetary base. That, that is exactly and only what it can do. And so I've got the trade weighted dollar against it, and you can see. Okay, now we're going with the monetary base. Now we're going with, uh, with Milton. You see how wrong he is, well, how he doesn't see it? Do you see? He thinks that this just went up because of QE, because he, he overlaid two charts. This is what I keep saying. We, I just had a discussion today with, with a couple of the guys. Great discussion. But, man, if you don't understand what the, the chart is actually telling you, if you don't quantify what, what the fuck it's telling you, then you're going to end up somewhere where you're in the middle of the Pacific swimming without a life raft. It's not why the the dollar strengthened it, because look in fact it, it, you know what it's going to take too long I, i'm not even going to explain it. he's wrong how about that when the monetary base ra rises it's in blue that the dollar tends to follow it but yet what's happening now is the dollar is being sold and dumped meanwhile the monetary base is ticking higher so what you're seeing here it's just a snippet of how can I be dollar bullish and bond bullish, both of them, many of you think is completely insane position, because I'm betting on the Fed. What? I know. Everyone says you can't fight the Fed. They do it backwards. They're doing it backwards. That's the whole point. The Fed can't raise stock prices. Everyone thinks they can, but the Fed can actually cost a dollar to go higher and bond prices to go higher. And yet many people believe that the Fed wants a weaker dollar, guess what? The Fed has no control or direct control over the dollar. Neither does the U.S. Treasury. But so wait, the Fed cannot cause the stock prices to go higher. Wow. Okay. Something that I also explained before, and we'll go through it again. When you lower the 10-year yield... And we've seen that here. When you lower the 10-year yield to 1%, you are competing with stocks. Those stocks right now are yielding 2.67. So I ask you do, you, do you want to own a can of Coke that's going to give you 2.67% interest rate, or do you want to own a can of Pepsi that's going to give you 1%? Pepsi being bonds, Coke being stocks. Which of the two do you want? Money chases yield. Do you want 1% from Pepsi or 2.67% from Coke? You see? 
What do you mean that the the, the, the Fed cannot boost asset prices? Of course it can. Of course, again, by artificially suppressing interest rates. And if you don't believe me, ask the Fed to go dump $7.2 trillion of treasuries in the market and then tell me where interest rates are going to be. You think they're going to be at 1%? Do you? Seriously? Interest rates will go through the fucking roof. It'll be like 20% or whatever. I don't know what it's going to be. I'm just, you know, exaggerating here. Maybe it'll be 10. You think you think anybody's going to run out and say, oh, man, I want to go buy stocks at 2.67% when bonds are giving me 10. Yeah, that makes sense. That's He's wrong. Again, he doesn't know what he's talking about. Even worse, even worse, if you're buying... If you are buying all these bonds and you're reducing the amount of bonds in existence, these bonds don't exist anymore. And then you take the, the dollar. There's this many in the world, right? If you're going to buy the bonds, well, you have to increase the supply of dollars printing. I, I just told you that. Okay. What happens to these dollars? Where do they go? Back to bonds? How about the rest? How about the rest? The rest are going to go to the stock market or wherever else they want to go. Or well, they're just reserves. No. Don't confuse the two. There's required reserves and then there's excess reserves. Okay? He, he thinks that when there's QE, that all those dollars are forced into the banking system of the required reserves. That's not true, even if they were to go there. That means that the other dollars that were supposed to go there, the free ones, the excess ones, that were supposed to be part of the required reserves, would not be there anymore. They don't have to worry about it, because the Fed is taking care of it. So that leaves those dollars in excess. Either way you cut it, it doesn't matter. There's more dollars in reserves, and those reserves are owned by people, high net worth individuals, pension funds, hedge funds, and they can put them wherever the fuck they want. So why do you think during the pandemic in March, the Fed com comes out, I think it was March 27th, 28th, and it says, up, oh, no more required reserves, do whatever the fuck you want with them. Why? Because they're stuck in the banking system? No, they can do whatever you want. If there's a bank run, give out the money. Do whatever you want with those dollars. There's no longer required reserve, which was, by the way, was about 1.5 trillion. So, in addition to the 4 trillion, in addition to the 4 trillion, the required reserves, the 1.5 trillion, were let loose by the Fed. Those dollars out that you could not move, they had to be, you know, at the Fed's balance sheet. 1.5 trillion from the banking system that was required is no longer required they're free to go so that takes us to where one point i'm sorry 5.5 trillion that was unleashed into the market so what did the stock market do Whee! oh no liquidity doesn't affect uh, the market no it doesn't this is fundamentals there's uh, the market is a forward-looking indicator it's climbing a wall of worry what in the world are you talking about, dude? What in the... You don't even know what you're talking about. But I got to deal with these people. I got to listen to them. <laughs> anyway, let's continue. By raising the monetary base Whoa. and through quantitative easing, they can increase the value of the dollar. And you can see it again in this chart right here. So what's driving the dollar lower? Well, one of the reasons is people are dumping dollars. They don't want them right now. You can see institutional money funds. This is the cash in your you know, brokerage accounts, IRAs, 401ks, large institutional money managers, and the dollars are going down. And so is the dollar. People don't want them. They want stocks and other They don't want them because there's a, a, an excessive amount of them. There's no demand. There's no scarcity. So, of course, they're going to dump them. But initially, when there was a scarcity and a fear, everybody wanted the dollar. Okay? And I'll be honest. In the beginning, I said, everybody's going to want the dollar now. 
because everybody else is fucked. The U.S. has the, the big, biggest, baddest pharmaceutical companies in the world. We are the mecca of fucking pharmaceutical companies. Of course the dollar is going to go higher. We're going to take care of this. I didn't know fucking Trump was an idiot. <laughs> that he's going to run around, oh, it's a liberal hoax, just a flu. We're not going to test. Uh, here, herd immunity, let's, let's go for it. I didn't know that. I had an idea that what he was saying was stupid. And then once I saw that, well, this guy, is, he's lost, open up, you know, let's go back to the thing, no lockdowns. I'm like, okay, forget about the dollar. The dollar is done. Why? Because we're going to have a big problem. And I said that continuously. I had a, an argument with, uh, I forgot his name, my Polish friend. He was like, no, you're wrong. He goes, you know, the, the yen is going to be more important. I'm like, fuck the yen. What, what yen? Forget about the yen. We, uh, we, we're the Mecca. Right? And he was like, no, you'll see. And he was right. He was right. Other things. And it's putting downward pressure on the dollar. But will it last? No, because eventually this money's going to come back to the institutional money funds when stock prices go down. I know you're thinking, well, that's never going to happen again. How about the relationship? Yes, the, the dollar will go back up at some point when the stock market crashes. Yeah, because it's called the fear indicator. But that, <laughs> again, it's the mechanics, right? Relationship between 10-year treasury yields and the dollar. As I pointed out in the past, this, they're like a couple that is dating. And, you know, they, they're together frequently, but from time to time they get apart. And one has to come back to the other. But look at this. The, the dollar is going down and treasury yields aren't going up that much. I mean, what you should see, right, is when the dollar is going down, we should see yields going up. So you see. Oh. All right. Let's go back to the world trade again. Why did, why did the 10 year go up? in 2016 onwards why did it go down to begin with remember i was showing you that there was uh, world trade was slowing here we go here we go so what happened so we got a rebound in 2011 okay into 2012 world trade was doing good and then it started to fall and then what happened in 2016 well trade started to rise what happened to interest rates interest rates started to rise So again, what caused interest rate to fall? Well, QE caused some of it. And then, you know, as they started to chill out with it, it pumped a little bit. And then you saw that the traded way the dollar started to rise. Why? Because Europe was having their fucking problems. And then you start seeing what? That the 10 years started to fall. What was falling? Well, world trade was fucking collapsing because of Europe. It was the black hole sucking everything in because we needed more imports we needed more demand out of europe and not let austerity we the u.s could not hold the whole entire planet dragging them being the only importer that's what i was saying so interest rates started to fall what happened 2016 well guess what world trade started to get better oh okay so then what happened to interest rates interest rates started to rise and then what happened well in 2018 everything started to fall again it started to fall and that, that's in 2000, September 2018 is when I said, oh, this doesn't look good. Uh, we're going into a recession. And sure enough, if you look at the data going up to February before COVID, even though COVID was around, the data was indicating in February it was showing a recession. I had no clue that this was going to end up with uh, COVID crisis and uh, depression and everything. But this is, this is September right in here, right there, okay, when I was saying that. And in fact... In fact, when the, when interest rates were at 10%, I kept saying these are going to fall. These are going to fall. It's a one, two, three up. This is going to fall. And I kept saying that. And, and again, you can go see the videos. It's not like I'm, I'm making shit up here, right? And then what happened to interest rates? It went all the way down to 0.5. And the whole entire time that you're watching this fall, you have fucking stupid Logan over there. Well, you know, it met my target. Every day it met his target. No matter, well, 1.57 is my target. 1.5 is my target. 1.46 is my target. 
one point it's in a range and 1.2 is in my target the whole way down is his target the whole way down you can ask my followers when i was saying look i'm done with the dollar it's not doing anything it's stuck there's nothing to trade in for i didn't even trade forex why because if there's no dollar movement there's nothing to trade in forex i didn't even touch it occasionally i tried a, a few euros didn't do anything blow up in my face but again this guy he's just throwing a couple charts on top of each other and then starts drawing conclusions starts saying well sometimes it don't really mix and they don't man no that's not the way it works there's dollar going up yields oh, going down Jesus. dollar going down yields going up what gives see it's telling us there's something wrong here the fact that the dollar is yes, falling and treasury depression. bills are marginally responding to it tells us there's a problem. Yields should be higher. Why do you think there's this? Yields should be higher in a depression? Are you fucking kidding me? They should be higher? Does he not know what's going on in the economy? Massive bet against yield. It's because people are now looking at the dollar going, yields have to rise. It means the only thing that can happen. Where's my up arrow for yields? It's the only thing that can happen right now. The dollar is telling us, unless there's a bigger problem, unless there's actually a bigger problem and the dollar is having no effect on it. How about the consumer price index? Why is everyone bullish on, I know I just lost them, but you could have pulled up the CBI chart. I get it. I get it. But why are people so nervous and bullish on higher consumer prices? Well, it would make sense. When the dollar goes down, consumer prices rise. We can see that in multiple occasions here. But look at this, the dollar's going down and the CPI went up a little bit and rolled over. It's telling us something is wrong. <laughs> yes, my friend, something is wrong. Very good. <laughs> He's right for the wrong reasons again. The, the dollar, oh God. You see how he created the chart? The dollar goes up when there's a recession because there's fear in the market, okay? So remember, you're a fund manager, you got billions and billions of dollars under management. You can't just take out the money and go put it in a bank account and it's 250,000 FDIC in short. That's not what you're paid for. You're paid to invest it, like it or not. Okay. So when the stock market starts to crash, there's fear. And then you do what? You buy the dollar. So that's why the dollar goes up. And then the stock market starts to recuperate. People sell the dollar and they go back into stocks. Okay. <laughs> that That's all he's looking at. Does he seriously believe that it's because the dollar is going up that it's creating deflation? No, no, there's fundamental economic problems in a recession. That's why there's no CPI. That's why you can't get inflation. Okay, and again, now we have a problem. Yes, very good. <laughs> it's called COVID and it's called the socioeconomic impact from COVID. That is the problem. So you can lower the dollar to whatever the fuck you want. It doesn't matter you're still going to have deflationary pressures, okay? Unless you hyperinflate. So what does that look like? And I'm not saying that Turkey has hyperinflated, but go look at their currency since 2000, okay? Go look at their, their currency since 2009, and all you'll see is the currency devalue while their stock market is going higher, okay? And then you, you get those high inflations. Is it because there's so much demand in the economy? No, of course. You cannot print, borrow, and import. You can't do it. Eventually, you're going to hit inflation for the wrong reasons, and it's going to be bad. It's going to be bad. In the system, when everything is not responding to a fairly sizable move in the dollar, and yet the answer is, well, it's going to go lower and everything's going to change. Well, Maybe it is, but maybe we just don't know what the problem is. You don't know what the problem is. It's the is. Fed. See, this is exactly. the money multiplier. We haven't looked in a while because they don't update it very often now anymore. It's the M2 money supply divided by the monetary base. It is one of the best approximations for deflation and inflation. So when the money... Bullshit. 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 Absolutely wrong. 
The monetary base doesn't mean anything. If you look at velocity of money, which is M2 divided by GDP, you're going to see that the, the velocity of money has been dying, dying for years, for years. So M2 doesn't mean anything. Forget about M2. M2 doesn't give you, it used to, yes, but it doesn't anymore. It doesn't. It has nothing to do with it. And the reason it doesn't have anything to do with it is because money is being pumped, being sucked out of the economy via household income to savings into profit savings. And that goes to the top 5%. And the top 5% take those dollars, they invest it in uh, speculative assets, which pushes up asset price inflation. And that's why you're seeing the stock market go higher. Okay, it's causing asset price infl inflation. The inflation is here, not here. You won't see inflation here. CPI doesn't measure stock market. Okay. Great guy, but man, he's fucking lost. The multiplier is rising. It is says that it's possible inflation can come. When it's falling it's or flat, it's telling you there's deflation. When it's flat, when it's falling, it's telling you it's deflationary. And so the dollar is falling here and the money multiplier is not even moving. It's telling us, hey, something is wrong here because you can see when the money multiplier <laughs> yes. crashes, the dollar it's rallies. Profit. When the money multiplier crashes, the dollar rallies. Who crashes the money multiplier? The Fed. No. And look, the dollar is going down. It shouldn't be. It should be telling us that the money multiplier should be rising. It should say, "Hey, it should be screaming." There's inflation, or it's coming. No. And the money multiplier says, "Eh, nothing." Why is that? Because what is the bottom and the denominator of the money multiplier? The monetary base. Who drives the monetary base? Sorcerer JP. No, no, no. We're number twenty-four in the world of. Of, uh, of monetary base expansion. I, I, I show that all the time. Here it is. Money supply, broad money, the monetary base. Here it is, 12 months. I was actually making fun of it. We're number 20 in the world. USA is number 20 in the world, printing 24% of GDP. Right there. Where is the inflation? You're not gonna see it. You're not gonna see it. You're gonna see asset price inflation you will not see uh, CPI inflation, headline inflation. And his spell of QE. Do you see there's a problem here? The Fed is counteracting the effects of the dollar. It's right before your eyes. All right, let's keep, let's no, look some not. more because you can't look at the it. consumer price index. Now, if we, oh, I know I just lost more of you again. Just, uh, just the way it goes when we talk CPI. But look, the CPI is rolling over in red and the money multiplier dipped down and it's flat. It's telling us there's probably no more inflation coming in the November data, which we'll get here in a, a couple weeks, uh, maybe next week or the week after, not sure which. It's telling us that the dollar is having no effect, none. And that is crazy that all this dollar selling has been counteracted by the Fed. Because as I said, it's effectively a zero duration bond is all it is. is this, and look at the uh, money multiplier against 10 year treasury yield. You know, not even 10 year treasury yields responded to their move higher in the money multiplier. It's telling us that the bond market is telling us, look, there really isn't going to be any inflation here. And the, that also tells us the money multiplier is more likely to head lower because the Fed will be pressured into doing more QE. Let's look at gold, right? Gold should be, you know, skyrocketing. We're hearing from people that are massive gold bulls. I mean, eh, wrong. There's two reasons why gold goes up. One is fear and the other one is monetary deflation. I'm sorry, inflation. Okay. These are the two reasons. So which one is winning at what point? If there's going to be less fear because the vaccine is coming, well, I'm not so fearful now, right? Vaccine, that's what they told me. It's going to be great. So do I want to go out buy gold if I believe that uh, everything is going to go back to normal in three to six months? No, I sell I sell gold. I don't, I don't, no, I don't believe it. Yeah, there's people out there. there there's 70, at least 71 million that we know of that voted for Trump who believe this bullshit. 
Oh, okay. Well, the fuck, the vaccine is here. Uh, we're going back to normal. You, you see? So that's one, one, one part of it. The other part of it is what? Monetary inflation. What, do they actually believe that, well, well we're not going to print anymore? Really? You're not? In what fantasy world is that? Right? But does that mean you're going to get the money when you're supposed to get it? Does that mean that at the end of this month you're going to get the money? I don't know that to be true. You think Congress and the Senate and everybody's going to agree in January or February? How do you know that? Right? That the money's coming, it's coming for sure. But how do you know it's going to come when it's supposed to come? So if the economy is slowing down now, with stimulus, with $600 checks, with extended unemployment, with, 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 with. If it's, if it's with that, it's slowing down. What, are you gonna th what do you think is going to happen now that we're locking down? Right? So even if you continue them, even if you continue them with the current stimulus, you're still going to get a slowing economy. You're not going to get a growing economy. So what does that mean? That if, God forbid, those checks, if they don't agree to at least extend them, you're going to implode. Everything's going to go poof. And then you're going to see how fast it's going to come in and stimulate. They're beside themselves, right? Everyone's like, it doesn't make any sense. I know how that feels. It, it, gold has to be going up here, no, right? Look at the dollar. Well, let's look. Because it's telling us something is wrong in the system. Because when the dollar goes up, gold tends to go down. And when the dollar goes down, boom, gold goes way up. And look, the dollar's going down and gold's going down. That doesn't make any sense. It's telling us something is wrong. What about crude oil? You know, people are really bullish about crude, saying it's going to go to 70 maybe $80 a barrel. Why is that? Because the dollar's going down and crude oil's not going up that much. If you Again, eh, wrong. All right, two reasons why oil goes up. One is because of monetary uh, devaluation, okay? You, you need, you know, when the dollar goes down, you need more dollars to buy the barrel of oil. Or two is because world demand is there and there's going to be a higher demand for oil, therefore oil will go higher. Okay? So that's the two. So right now, the, dollar, the oil has been stable. After collapsing below zero, it's remained stable. And that's because the oil companies themselves are shorting it, right? They're hedging their bets until demand returns. The fact that it went up a little bit above the previous high could, could signal that there's demand going forward. Okay, possibly. So you get a, a couple of more speculators thinking like they did before well there's no more fear vaccine is here there's going to be more demand in the future therefore i should go buy oil that's okay okay but it has nothing to do with the currency devaluation right that's an additional but it's not going to just simply go to the moon without demand you look at where the dollar is right now it usually suggests that crude oil should be higher than it is now. There are many times here it's in the 60s, 70s, and 80s. It's telling us, again, something is wrong in the system <laughs> or the quantitative easing is being extremely effective in what it does. So here's, again, the trade-weighted dollar against 10-year treasury yields, and I inverted the trade-weighted dollar on this chart because what we can see is the dollar is shooting up higher or lower, <laughs> I got upside down and now I'm upside down and yields aren't responding. So what does it mean for the dollar that it's going the wrong direction and then the probabilities are it's going to reverse? How because do you make a determination are... that it's going to reverse? Because he overlaid two charts and he, he, he created this illusion in his head that what he's saying is correct when it's not, we know it's not. You see, you see how you can convince yourself to put a bunch of things together and come up with some kind of story and and not really understand what the charts are really telling you. And then you confuse yourself. And then you end up somewhere where you're not supposed to be. That's problematic. That's that's my biggest fucking fear. That, that something like that would happen to me.
right? And that's why so, uh, sometimes I listen to other people, like their other points of views. I like to argue. I like to get in their face. I, I want like challenge me. I want to. I want to. I want to. I want to prove prove my point that I know that I'm looking at everything in the right direction, and that you're not going to come up with something that I'd be like, "Fuck! I never thought of that." I like that. Okay, but when you're enclosed in your own little cocoon, and you're just sitting here drawing little fucking charts like this, oh yeah, this means this and that means that, and sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. I'm I'm just gonna pick the times that it it does work, and I'm I'm gonna conclude this. When you end up like that, you're finished, and that's what he's been doing consistently so far. Rising, or I'm sorry, <laughs> when yields are rising and the dollar is. <laughs> And now I'm all goofed Follow. up. But nevertheless, when the dollar's rising, and now I'm backward because I got it upside down. So we'll just move on to, yeah, that, to me. Don't worry <laughs> that poor relationship that I was trying to make. I'm sure you figured out that the bottom line here is the dollar is trying to tell us that, that interest rates should be going higher, and they're not, which tells us what direction the dollar's likely to head. There he goes with the up. How do you and come if up the with the dollar up? is not having an effect on oh. crude oil, export prices, gold, inflation, what's going to happen when it starts to rise? It's going to be a massive wrecking ball, because what's really what we're really learning here, right? Is financial conditions are tight, and that the, def, the there's so much deflation in the economy that not even a massively aggressively weakening, weakening dollar is slowing it down. It's barely slowing it down. That's how big the deflationary pressure is in the economy. And yet everyone is massively bold up on stocks, massively bold up on risk assets, short the bond market, short the dollar, and they can't see the deflationary pressures. It's there. It's all over the place. And so that, my friends, is why we're seeing what we're seeing in the dollar. That you, you now understand why people are so bullish on risk assets, and yet at the same time, the money multiplier and treasury yields are telling us, look, the dollar isn't going, it, it can go down, but it's not doing anything. And when it, it can't go down, even though it's going down and it's been going down. And he's been saying the dollar is gonna go up for God knows how long. I don't know what, like, you know, this is how you, you brainwash yourself. This is precisely how you brainwash yourself. We, we've we said it very clearly on the live chats. Very clearly. Be careful when it starts to build pressure at the bottom of the structure. Be careful when there's building pressure at the bottom of the structure. Be careful. Why? Because it's going to eventually break. I've said that I don't know how many times. In fact, I said, look... You can go back and look at this. I said, this is a bullish formation. This is going to come down, come down, and then it's going to pop. Okay. Tested the previous high and then it started to fall. Okay. Well, what is it doing? It's building pressure at the bottom of the structure. That's not good. That's not good. That's not what you want to see because that's going to resolve to the downside. Now, how, how long, how low can it go? I don't know. I don't have a crystal ball. I don't have these magical little overlaying charts that can tell me the future. I have no clue. I'm just telling you that this broke. This structure broke, period. What else do you want me to tell you? And it's not like there was QE that was strengthening the dollar here or up here, right? It wasn't QE that was doing that, right? It wasn't QE that was building up the dollar here or lack of QE that made the dollar fall here or strengthen here. But he somehow he determined that QE was doing it here. I I don't know where the fuck he comes up with that shit. Doesn't make sense to me. But he's got seven thousand followers, so you know. That's why I say, you know, share this video with other people because if you don't believe me, that's fine. But at least you'll get a different perspective goes up it's going to be very very bad for the economy and very 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 bad for risk assets so that's how i could still be bullish on the dollar dollar going up is not going to be bad for the u.s because we're net importers we need a strong currency to import so we can import more stuff with a stronger dollar otherwise if we don't we need to have more dollars to the rest of the world to acquire the same the same amount or less amount of goods and services and the more dollars we have to export 
the more there's no demand for the dollar. Okay, it's kind of like oil. Oil can be controlled within a certain range by, by the Arabs, okay? And then once it starts going one way or the other, it becomes uncontrollable. That's why oil went to below zero, and that's why oil went to 150, okay? So <laughs> it's not necessarily going to be a wrecking ball, a wrecking ball because the dollar strengthened. I know some of you are going to jump into the comments and say, you are crazy. I'm being nice. All right, let's get into the economic data. We'll move into Wednesday here. We've got the Wednesday okay, or Thursday this stuff data. I don't think Sorry. We need to go over. Challenger job cuts. What are okay? Uh, nice that it goes over it. I, I, I don't know what this. You know, it's too much. I think you you need to be aware of these things. I think that's good that he pay, makes people aware of them. I don't like the conclusions that he draws from them. Uh, some of them, he, he states the obvious, right, that uh, unemployment is way too high, uh, and he's right about that. He's right ab about a lot of things. He's not wrong about everything, obviously. Um, again, being able to understand these economic data are great, but being able to, to, to look at them uh, as a mosaic of data, of information, and then say, okay, what's kind of sticking out here? What do, what do I need to pay attention to? Uh, is what's more important to, to be able to understand again what the data is telling you what what data is isolators right going up and down up and down up and down what part is really fundamentally macro uh, so uh, I think that that's good on his part that he does that exposes people to it I think that's good but you know you can't make determinations looking at you know every day these these data points in of themselves and this is where macro and, and micro blend together and it confuses the situation so you have to understand which parts what they mean in terms of trend over the macro uh, numbers in of themselves tell you nothing about trends uh, and that's you know it's myopic it's my micro instead of macro Okay, so just kind of be careful about this. It's good that he's exposing people to it, but just be really careful with making determinations based on these things. Again, I'll, I'll stop here. It went way too long. I'm sorry, but man, it's painful. Uh, he means well. Uh, you can see it. You know, the guy is trying, but he's a long way off, long way off. All right, that's it, guys. Uh, thank you very much. If you have any questions, please ask me, and I will be more than happy to respond. I prefer that you do it on um, uh, on, on my Facebook page, so I can post uh, pictures and stuff. If you do it on on uh, on the um, on YouTube, I can't put uh, charts up, so that's uh, a little bit problematic. Um, don't forget to come down to patreon.com slash real macro and subscribe. Uh, also, uh, please like and thumb up the, the video. Uh, again, you know, Steve's a great guy, but he gets a lot of shit wrong. All right. Take care. I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.